The James Webb Space Telescope has finally been launched and is on its way to begin collecting data to improve our understanding of the universe. At the time of recording, it is around a million kilometres away from us, about two-thirds of the way to its destination orbit at Lagrange Point 2, and will reach L2 in another 17 days. While we wait with bated breath for the first images to return to us in the next six months, many people have been wondering if they can view the JWST while it makes its way to or when it arrives at L2. I've seen a number of different answers on this question, but the true answer is yes, you can, and you don't even need expensive gear. Hello again, Internet Astro with Roro here. Let's discuss how you can photograph the JWST. If you find videos like this interesting or useful, consider subscribing. First, let's talk about the elephant in the room. How come many people are saying you can't see the JWST, yet I say we can? I believe this comes down to how people think you are looking. If you look at the size of the James Webb Space Telescope when it's fully deployed, it will be like a slightly short tennis court. While to us that might seem pretty big, when it's one and a half million kilometers away, it suddenly doesn't sound so big anymore. Many people also look at the Lagrange Point 2 and see that it's in the Earth's shadow, and assume that the James Webb Space Telescope will be in this shadow and thus very dark. This leads many to believe that the JWST will be too small to detect. However, that's not correct. Why is that though? While it's true that JWST will be exceptionally small to look at when it's at L2, we don't actually need to resolve it to see it. It also is not going to be sitting at the L2 point, but instead orbiting around it. This orbit will also be quite large, with a radius of 800,000 kilometers. This means it will not be in the Earth's shadow, but instead in direct sunlight. And it does this so that it can power itself through solar arrays. So how do we see the JWST if it's too small to resolve? Well, our first help in this regard is that the sun facing side of the James Webb Space Telescope is highly reflective. In fact, it's designed to reflect as much light and heat back in our direction as it possibly can. This increases its brightness and the chance that we'll be able to view it. The second thing working in our favor is that the JWST isn't sitting still. Because it's currently on its way to L2, and when it arrives, it's going to be in orbit around L2, we'll be able to see its change in position over time compared to the background stars, which will appear static in our images. The final great thing is that of the L2 point itself. The Lagrange point 2 is always on the opposite side of the Earth to the Sun. This means it is always in our night sky, and thus always visible. So the JWST will be able to be imaged at any point over the next decade or so, given it can continue to hold its orbit correctly. Over the last few nights, I've been out capturing images of the James Webb Space Telescope. So let's now have a look at those and see what you can expect to capture from equipment that is more like a DSLR than a telescope. If you're interested in hearing more about what gear I use, check out my other videos or consider subscribing for more. Here is a single two minute image from a 250 millimeter lens and a monochrome camera under suburban Sydney skies, around Bortle 5. Now there is a lot of stars in this image as well as a number of asteroids and other satellites. However, if we zoom way in, we can see that one star perhaps looks a little elongated compared to the rest. Now let's try adding in a second frame and jump between them. Haha, <laughs> movement. If we continue adding in more and more frames, we can continue to see that movement in a specific direction. Are you as amazed as I am when I first saw this? Viewing a tennis court sized satellite from a million kilometers away. That's two and a half times further away than our moon. Let's now walk through what gear you'll want to use and how to find where the JWST is so that you can image it for yourself. The most important piece of kit is a mount that can track the stars. This can be something like a small star tracker or a full-blown astrophotography mount. This will allow you to take long exposure images and keep the stars from turning into trails as the Earth spins. You can use a stock standard DSLR or mirrorless camera, but I would suggest using a lens at least 200 to 300 millimeters in focal length. The lens that I used was a 250 millimeter f4.9 with a crop sensor camera. If you're using a telescope, longer focal lengths will help you see more movement. Finally, you'll want a computer or a phone so that you can find the current location of the James Webb Space Telescope in the sky. 
There are two methods that I suggest using to find and photograph the JWST. The first is fast and easy, but not as accurate. This is a better method if you're using a wider angle lens, something less than 500 millimeter focal length. This is because if you're slightly off, since you have a wide field of view, it doesn't matter and you should still catch JWST. For this method, all you need is a phone. In this case, you can see up here, me using my iPhone and an app called Sky Guide. When you open the app, hit the search button and type in JWST, clicking on the result. You'll then see where in the sky the JWST currently is. If you're going to be manually pointing your camera, then all you want to do is match the stars you see in your camera's sensor with those near the JWST when you zoom in on the sky in the app. By tapping on the name JWST or the I button, you'll bring up more information. Then under the observing tab, you can see the current RA and DEC coordinates for the James Webb Space Telescope. From here, you can get your telescope to plate solve to the exact location if you have automation set up with your astro mount. If you're looking to use a large telescope with a narrow field of view, then you'll want to use a more precise method though, as these apps can sometimes have outdated orbital numbers. In this case, we'll be using the JPL Horizon system. You can use a link down in the video description to land on the app page. Here, you'll want to change the target body to JWST and then choose your location. In the time specifications, you'll want to add in a start and end time. I usually just look at a day or two ahead and change the step size to one hour. Now you're ready to generate the table of coordinates. Scroll down the page slightly and you'll find a list that looks like this. You can then take this data into the field with you and use the RA and DEC rates here for the hour you're wanting to observe at. Do note that these numbers are in universal time, so you'll need to convert that into your local time zone. You are now ready to go out and image the James Webb Space Telescope. However, I'll leave you with a few final recommendations to help you get the most out of your images. My first tip is to find skies that don't have too much light pollution. This will help you differentiate the James Webb Space Telescope from the background sky, making your job a lot easier. You may also need to image for longer than 30 seconds, depending on your lens's focal ratio. So if you're using a DSLR that's capped at 30 seconds, go and get yourself an intervalometer and use the bulb mode. I found that two minute exposure times worked well for me with an f4.9 lens. So you can adjust from there, depending if you have a faster or slower focal ratio. The longer your focal length, the more movement you will see since your field of view is narrower. Of course, a longer focal length lens or telescope comes with its own challenges like increased weight and size or slower f-stops. So you'll need to compensate for all of that. Finally, the movement is best seen by taking a number of images at regular intervals, then stacking or blinking between them. I'd suggest taking images for at least 30 minutes, but as the James Webb Space Telescope moves further and further away from us, its speed will begin to slow. So if you're watching this video long after it's released, you may need to take a few hours of images to see significant movement when you stack them together. Good luck on your attempts imaging the James Webb Space Telescope. If you've enjoyed this video or learned something, consider subscribing. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and clear skies.